Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again today. I am Trace, and this is episode 2 of 5 in our series on humor. Yesterday we talked a bit about what happens in our brains when we're perceiving jokes and perceiving humor, so make sure you check that out if you haven't. Today we're going to talk about how humor evolved. Make sure you subscribe, you won't miss all of our episodes, and you'll also catch our special guest coming at the end of this series. But humor evolved a long time ago, way before you were even a human. We all have humor of some sort, but it's not just for us, it's also for the people around us. And it may have started in our ape ancestors. One theory about how we developed laughter is, is as a mechanism to tell a sparring partner that everything is okay and that our play fighting wasn't too rough. Think of it this way. You're wrestling with another chimp on the ground or you know an ancestor of a common ancestor with us and a chimp. And then if you're laughing, it means that everything's okay. But if you aren't laughing, then it's a very obvious signal that something's not okay. It's not fun anymore, and this maybe should stop. To prove this theory, a psychologist listened to recordings of chimps, bonobos, gorillas, and orangutans being tickled, and then compared it to humans laughing and found that there were similarities between the two sounds. But apes aren't the only animals known to laugh. Science has proven that if you tickle a rat, it will also laugh. And if two rats are wrestling, they will make this laughing noise, as long as the rats are about the same size. If one of the rats is way bigger, then it's not fun for the little rat, and that rat doesn't laugh. And by laugh, we don't mean like the rats out there going like, ha ha ha, we mean more it's a 50 kilohertz chirp. It doesn't sound like our laugh at all. But for a rat, that sound means happiness. There are other sounds that animals will make to signal happiness as well. Dogs make that huffing noise, which will signal willingness to play and also happiness. Though it doesn't have the same ha sound as human laughter either, but it's used in similar ways. It's a vocal and social sign of happiness. Dolphins make specific noises during play fighting. And as we learned earlier though, humor and laughter aren't necessarily the same thing. The question really is, at its base level, do animals have a sense of humor, right? We aren't quite sure because animals don't have complex languages. So they won't have the ability to get jokes in the way that we do if you were listening earlier. Most animals don't talk to each other in that way and definitely can't talk to us. But Coco the gorilla knows sign language and she has been known to make her own jokes. She was once asked, what is hard? And she answered with rock and also work. She understands language. Another time, she tied her trainer's shoelaces together and then made the sign for to have him chase her, <laughs> which sounds a lot like a joke to me. Many scientists point to these examples as animals understanding humor, if in a rudimentary way, and maybe show why humans started laughing in the first place. It's a signal everything's okay, and from there we've kind of evolved it into like a business, but also a way of interacting with each other. There are many theories on how and why a sense of humor developed in humans, and one is related to the social brain hypothesis, which says that human brains evolved so that we could live in bigger groups. Bigger brains mean better communication, better communication means better group interaction, and laughter and humor are a way of signaling to the group that we're all a-okay. It's also a way to bond socially. Incongruity theory says we laugh because something is unexpected or unsurprising, and this is when something normal is twisted in such a way that it induces laughter, and this goes back to what we were saying earlier about your brain processing something and telling you that it's funny. For those of you that understand how humor is constructed in stand-up and things, make sure you stick around. Like I've mentioned, we have a special guest. Superiority theory is that humans started using humor to make themselves feel better than others. You laugh at someone less fortunate than you, and that raises you up. And that theory goes all the way back to like Plato and Aristotle. Kind of sounds like a dick move. Uh, but then there's this relief theory, which says we have humor to help make us feel better. It releases pent up nervous energy. And Sigmund Freud wrote about this one, saying it was a way to release sexual repression, not so much about stress, but that was like Freud's MO. Calm down, Freud. And many feel that humor and laughter are actually good for your health. Laughter makes you feel better. You know, laughter is the best medicine. That's actually not entirely true. It does release neurochemicals into your body, dopamine, which calms you down. It helps you feel good. It lowers levels of inflammation, which helps you heal. It increases blood flow, stretches muscles, helps the flow of oxygen, reduces blood sugar. All of these things are great 
for helping you heal, but it's only part of the thing. The same stuff as diet and exercise. Note, but it's just laughter. It also helps with mental and emotional health. Even though studies have shown health benefits, laughter alone can't cure disease, can't prevent disease. It's something that helps you get in the right mood, helps make you stay positive, and helps make you feel better in general, which in turn will help your body heal itself. One doctor even recommended pairing 30 minutes of exercise three times per week with 15 minutes of laughter a day, which is kind of awesome. Although that, when you think about it, that's a lot of laughter to have to schedule in during the day. But beyond health, you know, emotional and physical, there are collective benefits of having a sense of humor. It helps create social bonds, collective bonds. If I say a joke and everyone laughs, now we're all on the same team. I feel good, they all feel good. It's also a trait many feel is important for good leaders. It helps calm tense situations. It improves team building. It improves team morale. And one survey found that 84% of those asked thought people with a good sense of humor would do a better job at work. Another study found that the two traits that people look for most in a leader is work ethic and sense of humor. And one study done in France found that women are three times more likely to give their phone number to a guy if he was funny. I haven't met that many funny French people, but it sounds like pretty good odds. So we have evolved to laugh and find things humorous, but just because we've evolved to do it and just because we understand what happens in our brains doesn't mean that we understand everything. But could we create something like artificial intelligence that has a sense of humor? Come back tomorrow to find out. We're gonna talk about that on Test Tube Plus for episode three this week, and then we're gonna keep going on this, so make sure you subscribe so you get more. But now I would like to tell another joke. Our associate producer, Blair, is gonna paste a joke into my script, and I'm gonna read it for the first time, and we're gonna see if it's funny. That's what's happening right now. While he does that, let us know down in the comments if you have a favorite comedian or what you understand when it comes to humor. Has humor ever helped you through a difficult time? Tell us about it in the comments. Also, come find the show on Twitter at TestTube. You can find me at Trace Dominguez and make sure you watch our first episode if you haven't yet. So the joke that we're pasting in, what is it? A man walks into a zoo. The only animal in the entire zoo is a dog. It's a shit zoo. <laughs>